Welcome back to Adri's Homestead Life. It is 1st of May. Let's do the May garden tour. Welcome to the garden. I just the bees. So busy on these fruit trees. And look at this cherry. Right, that's my quince tree, and it's gonna come, come into flower next, I think. This is the last one to flower. Last night it was 7 degrees Celsius, at the moment it's 18, and the max was 22. You wanna say hello, Sandy? My precious little dog. You can't come in. You can't come in, sweetie. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. He is really, really dying to come in. Welcome to the garden. Where shall we start our tour? Let's start in here, where the potatoes are and the garlic. Look how much growth they put on since the last frost. <laughs> Remember, I, I covered this side. And then... I forgot to cover this side, but they are catching up. So it was only a little bit out. You know, these here, that dry bit, that's what the frost had. We had a lot of rain the past two days and reasonably nice temperature. I've just spotted the first butterfly. Of the year, it's blue, beautiful blue, tiny, it's far away, so probably you can't see it. But yeah, I'm very happy with my, this is my first early potatoes. And I am fairly happy with the way they garlic look. Let's just peek how big they are. Oh, they're tiny. They're tiny at the moment. Right. Still time. Still time. Couple of more months to go. So the hay is in the bucket, that's what I've used to cover the potatoes up. And the frost. This is a perennial sweet pea. That's a leek from last year. Needs harvesting really. So this area of the bed has not been touched yet really. I really need to uh, harvest all the leek. You can see I've got loads of leek in here. And they are beautiful actually now. I'm really happy with them. I don't want them to go to seed now and, you know, get wasted. And all these clumps of garlic, they're coming up every year. So I, I should probably just going to have to leave them and... Uh, just plant something around it or I don't know. Let me know what you think. So, oh, that's, that's the butterfly, I'm not sure if you can see it. Just right there. Oh, so pretty. Hello, it's tiny. Are you tiny? Yes. So, yeah. Needs attention this side of the garden, to be honest. Needs weeding and making my mind up what I want with all these leek and garlic and some onion over there. And uh, I've got lots to plant out. Apple trees are in blossom now, covered with bees. So I've got another two rows of garlic here. This is really good. Let's see if the bulbs are any bigger here. Mm, no, still tiny. Okay, put it back. Right. Next bed. It's got the salad. Got some cauliflower. Iceberg lettuce, coriander, and some other mixed lettuces all along. Got some garlic in there as well. Yes. 
really need to harvest and everything. Okay. Over here, under this tunnel, I've got parsnip and carrot. I think the carrots are up. But I'm not sure about the parsnip because I've got so much growing in them, my homemade compost. So much growing that I don't know which one is the parsnip. Let me just, oh yeah, here you go. I'm not sure if you can see it. That's the carrot. So I've got a row of carrot. I've got actually two rows of carrots. I'll just take you out, sorry. <laughs> and then I don't think so the parsnip is up yet. So I've been weeding in here, if you believe, if you're not. <laughs> but I just want to keep this uh, cannon mill, harvest it first and then plant something. Look at this beautiful yellow tulip. It's going over now, yellow and pink. They've been blooming for a while. I've got some brassicas there, like cabbage from last year. Honestly, literally these two survived. I haven't had much of a brassica luck this year from last year's plants. This area is uh, empty at the moment. I've got some mullen. Oh, the flowers forming now. I love uh, the bees, love that mullen flower. I've got some volunteer potato in the corner and the big sorrel bush by the tunnel. Oh, we've made the progress in a herb garden. Look, it's been nicely weeded. <laughs> So, looking really, really good. Okay, so the tunnel, I honestly, I've got no luck when it comes to direct seed sowing beans and peas because they just never come up. It's, they're just disappearing before they've got a chance to come up. It's animal food. <laughs> So I've got a backup and they need to come up now. I've got actually my beans in the house, still in the conservatory. They're absolutely massive, they really need to come out. But the garlic, jungle, both sides. Hello, bumblebee. And I've got the shallot row of in here all along. That's good. This little blue butterflies following me. Can't wait for our first potato harvest next month. Right. The brassica cage is looking good, although the slugs are having a feast. And I've got lots and lots of uh, damage on my cauliflower, kohlrabi and cabbages, baby plants. This chocolate mint doing well and the broad beans is doing well just needs weeding gosh wow look how much so much thing and growing here I can see calendula porridge chamomile dandelion lots of wildflowers all sorts growing here, you know, but I'm happy. Some of the broad beans are now in flower. Well, I need to weed this area as well again. And I think I'm gonna put squash in here this year, winter squash. Look, broad beans in flower. I'll chuffed with that, okay. So the tulips now this side is going to flower, I mean, it's going over, <laughs> flowering I meant. So they are now, I have to say goodbye for another year for these beautif beautiful tulips. And look at these tulips, aren't they just gorgeous? Wow, look how pretty. 
and I've got some daffodils out. First of May. Oh, look how nice. Beautiful. And welcome to the onion bed and a few rows of garlic, but mostly onion. Very happy with my onion. I started weeding, I'm nearly halfway through weeding the onion bed. I've got one, two, three, that's garlic, four, that's garlic, five, six, seven rows of onion and two rows of garlic and some volunteer lettuce. So I I weeded this area and I need to weed over here next few days. But I don't mind, I love weeding, weirdly. It's quite therapeutic. Okay, so there's the allium and some flower. That daffodil's going over now. Iris is coming now. Dandelion, uh, not dandelion, sorry, the dahlia. The frost had the dahlia, but it's coming back. Mm. Onion, sorrel, lily, tulip, more sorrel. Yeah, cool. Let me just take this flower head off of this. Onion, that's it. So I've got two rows of onions in here as well. And I just can't make my mind up, to be honest, what I'm going to put on this tunnel this year. So we just have to wait and see. But this is what I've done, it was on my last video. Planting out all the lettuces, doing good. Just on the side of the onion, lettuces. And here I've got beetroot looks a bit battered but hopefully we'll be okay it's a bit windy so i've got some few kohlrabi some spring onions and a chard it's looking good back to the main crop potato bed coming up slowly and all along here I've got the celery and spring onion and all along here and halfway there and this blue butterfly is following me <laughs> probably because I've got yellow top on and coriander and spring onion and look at these two rows of the uh, main main crop potatoes I can see a slight frost damage on it, you know. Ooh. Ouch. Never mind. It's not bad, it's not bad. If that's all the frost damage they're gonna have this year, I'm happy with that. We've got another month to go. Okay, so I think we pretty much done the May Garden tour. Let's check quickly the plastic cage. That is in now full. I cannot really put much more in there. I think I've put already too, too much. So we've got cauliflower and iceberg lettuces. And I've got one onion in the middle. But, you know, the slugs are eating these. I've put eggshells around it, but you know, I don't think so, they do much, to be honest. And even the lettuce has been shredded. Especially now we had the two days of rain. It's just, you know, slug heaven. Kohlrabi is not too bad so far. Few eaten. But most of it's still good. On the other side, I've removed now a few the purpose protein broccoli. I left it there now for the slugs, you know. Hopefully they're gonna eat that, not my cabbage. <laughs> Let's see if that plan works. If not, we're gonna go to the animals. Chickens will love it. So yeah, that's the plastic cage just by uh, I'm collecting my eggshells. I'm keeping it in that in the compost bin. Alright. Ok. 
Okay. So, yeah. I'm fairly happy how everything going so far. And actually, I can't believe it's May. I cannot believe it is May. Oh, this toffee over there. My Guernsey. Billy goat. Hello, sweetie. He thinks I've got something. Hello, big boy. Oh, hello. You want to say hello? Hmm? Are you saying hello? Yeah? Say hello. Hello. Oh, I love you. Okay. Shall we check on the fruit cage? Why not? Let's go. Oh, I can see. Can I see? Is that right? Yeah. There's lots of gooseberries. Oh dear. This uh, needs attention here. The string is not snapped, but yeah. It needs a uh, tying back. Oh dear. Look at this jungle already. And this is nothing compared to what it's going to be in June. So the raspberry is looking good. It's going to be in flower soon. Looks like we're going to have loads of raspberry. And then that's the goji berry. That's all the, that's, uh, you know, it's too early. We'll start flowering mid-summer and fruit in autumn. But the gooseberry, gooseberry is going to be the first one to give me fruit of this year. Look. Oh, they are growing slowly. You see it? How is it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a few actually on it. So I'm happy with that. So gooseberry, raspberry, goji berries later on. The logan berry, this is the... I need to tie back. Ah, oh, it's coming to flower. Yeah, I had a, such a bumper crop last year. Oh yeah, look, woohoo, it's coming to flower. I really need to do something about this. Just separate it and just tie it back to the fence because that will grow like crazy. That will, this will reach soon the other side of the fruit cage. So, okay, let's see the, oh. That's my grape vine. Oh, something's happening on it. The buds on it come in. Okay. This is the honeyberry, I think. But I was hoping I'm gonna get some fruit on it this year because I had a little bit of a flower, but can't see nothing on it to be honest. But it's a shame because I've not tried that yet. Okay, let's go. Let's check on these five raised beds and call it done. I've got to come back to tie these logan berries. So, got some strawberries in here growing and the blueberries. These two blueberries not flowered. I'm not sure if it's because I've moved it. I've moved these two from the fruit cage to here this year. So, but this one was flowering, but we had few frost. So I honestly don't know if, I um, think we lost quite a bit, but I can see if you want it. So we might have, I'm going to have some blueberries too. But yeah, I can't really grow blueberries uh, that well, to be honest. I think there is a parsnip in there from last year. Grew back, volunteered. Oh, look at these strawberries. Hey. Hello, Bundy. Hello. Oh yes, they're looking really good. We saved, it, we saved it from the frost. Cannot wait for strawberry harvest. There's a straw that I used to cover it up. And another garlic heaven in here. So I've moved this artichoke from the corner to the middle. I thought I'd lost it, but it's shooting again, so I'm very happy. The echinacea is coming up nicely in between the garlic. 
Oh, look at the rhubarb. Oh, I need to harvest the rhubarb. Oh, yes. I can harvest this. Yes. Definitely. Horseradish now coming up nicely. And a lot more garlic in here as well, look. I harvested a handful of asparagus this morning. It's really nice. It tastes like, tastes like pea to me. Oh, this one's, this one's a nice one. This will be a breakfast for tomorrow. I'll come out tomorrow and I'm going to harvest. This probably will go, grow a bit taller. But yeah, it's not a lot. But yeah, it's food, so and it's still some time to go. So that's my asparagus bed. Okay. Let's go to the polytunnel. Let's go to the tunnel. Next. What's happening in there? Welcome. Let's check the temperature. What was the temperature last night? Oh, not bad. 8 degrees Celsius and the maximum was nearly 29 degrees. Reset. What's it at the, at the moment? 21. Perfect. I think we've not, we haven't lost these beautiful marigolds quite. So I'm not sure, but it might come back. You know, the frost had this minus one point something, minus two degrees Celsius killed this marigold and some of the nasturtium, but most of it survived. I can't believe it. I did have a good soak a couple of hours ago, so some of the plants look a bit like, ooh, lying, but they will stand up. <laughs> I will stand up soon. So, oh gosh, they're already going to seed. All these pak choys. I gotta harvest this pak choy. What's this? It's a kohlrabi, is it? No, it's not, is it? I keep thinking it's a kohlrabi, but it's a cabbage. Yeah, it's an early autumn red cabbage. That really needs to go somewhere. It needs to go to the garden as, as soon as possible. Just come out. Look at this. How beautiful this is now filled with all these pak choy, different varieties of lettuces, coriander, sorrel, garlic. Look, look at this. Not sure if you remember when I've put, not even long ago, a month ago, maybe. They were baby little seedlings and they are now filled this raised bed. How wonderful is this? I just love it. Makes me so happy just to look and look in at it. So that's where we've just been. That's the onion, got some garlic in there, lots and lots of dill. And I've got some peas for pea shoot. This is actually, this is now a poppy. Poppy's coming up. Celeriac needs to go out very soon. Look at this kale. So what's happened to the kale when it goes to seed? It sh shoots up. Honestly, it's nearly as tall as me. And uh, how beautiful these flowers are. Absolutely gorgeous. It is edible. Bees love it. Animals love it. And I just love looking at them. I think it's gorgeous. Wow, all these beautiful lettuces now need harvesting. Or some of them going to the animals. Because I need the bed for the tomatoes. So, lettuces, spinaches. All these spinaches. Look at the size of this lettuce. I mean spinach. And the kale. Needs clearing out now. We use as much as we can, and then rest goes to the animals. And I'll just give a good rake over these two beds, and we're gonna plant 
the tomatoes this week or next week. So this is the so I've got some lettuces there and some parsley. So yeah, really good. I've got all these cabbages, greyhound, to plant out. Some coriander, sweet pea. Sweet pea needs to go out as well. Everything now needs to go out. It's just finding the time now to plant everything out and just look, watch the weather. So the kale replacement. So from this little plant, it's going to be that huge tree looking plant when it goes to seed. I love it. So this is a row of coriander, one row of lettuce, some dill coming through and all these phacelia. I am keep saying I know every time and I still haven't moved them out. They need to go out because they go huge. The bees love it but I need this bed for something else. So that's what's happened when I've been just watering. But all these now, this mustard green, needs to go to the animals. And I haven't done really well in here with these radishes. I think it was just too much. I've sowed in here too, far too much. So that's not a good radish, really. No. Hmm. I might try to sow some more outside, direct. Directly outside. But this uh, chard is looking good. Carrot. I am tempting to, I know you should not move carrot, but I'm tempting to move this out and separate. I'm not sure whether I make a mistake or not. I probably would do a bit of an experiment with a little bit, maybe with a few, or half of it. And that's the parsley from my home safe seed. So yeah, that's the polytunnel tour in 1st of May. Let's go to the greenhouses. The greenhouse is a jungle. Honestly, I still put the I think it's a light on. I still put the heaters on at night. I've had it on only on low last night. It was wasn't wasn't too bad night temperature. But you know, I still only managed to get ten to twelve degrees Celsius in here. So we, st we still need those heaters on. Right, I shall we start. So these are the peppers. I want to show you actually. I've got peppers now, actual actual peppers growing. The golden car wonder. Look! Yeah, I've got peppers. I've got three growing in here. Three peppers. Got some cornflower up the top and some cabbages. Uh, this is this black Hungarian pepper plant. It's got purple leaves, purpley green leaves, stems. I'm very curious what the... It's gonna start flowering soon. Right, so I've got loads and loads of peppers. I'm actually now... I've got... I really need to put them on. Because they they are looking great, but they they, they show me sign of, you know, stress. The leaves are now turning slightly yellow and and then when they curl in that's mean I've got aphid uh, on those plants so they are going wrinkly like that and I can actually lose the plant but you know I try to be on top of it I have to pick them off look at this oh look it's kind of, where is it flowering now Oh, it's flowering. My tomatoes. Holy moly. Which one is that? Mini bell. Oh, I'm exciting. Oh, I love the smell. Oh, I just love it. Right. Mm. I can see the aphids on it now. Sandika, hang on, sweetie. Oh. Both of, I've got both of the dogs, but also, yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it, I'm so sorry, but they are like 
tiny green bugs. They are the aphids and they literally, they're so hard because they curl the leaf and, uh, they, you know, it's not easy to see them. They're sometimes under, here we go, under the leaf. It's over there, honestly, where my, can you see how tiny that is? Yeah, so, but the tomatoes are looking amazing. Really, really ready to go out. Okra, marigold, beetroot, cosmos in the back. Two dogs under the bench. What are you doing there? Lucy, what are you doing? Come on, let's go. I'll show you the basil. Got two different basil in here. And beautiful marigold. It's looking really good now. They will go up with my tomatoes. Welcome to the pretty greenhouse. So much going on in here as well, honestly. So I've got all these peppers. I can't probably tell you everything because I've just it's just too much. Just keep checking on those aphids because look at the state of these peppers. That's not a healthy pepper plant. All oh, the tomatoes are looking amazing. I can actually harvest this basil now. So if I snip the top off like that, I can use this as a basil tea, I can cook with it. And this little plant, it looks like it's half gone now, that will bush up and I will have even more basil on it. Leek. Oh, I've got tomatillo. It's putting on. Honestly, it's just too much in here now. Too, too, too much. Oh my gosh, I was so worried. I was away for a couple of days and everything was okay, but I forgot to uh, water these Calendula Cosmos Zinnia plants and they were looked dead. But look what a bit of water can do to them. This one looks still a bit, you know, not really well, but the rest is good, thank God. Oh, I've got beautiful aubergine over there. And lots and lots and lots and lots of tomatoes. And you girlies? Lots and lots and lots of tomatoes. What do you think, Lucy Bear? Yeah. So, thank you so much for spending some time with me on 1st of May and looking around my, my garden. So we've done garden tour, polypanel tour and Two greenhouse tours. In the third one is not much happening, still all the same, still the garlic leak there and a few more bits, not much. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed my vlog today and see you very soon. Bye friend! <laughs>